going on, uh, you know, close to about nine, 10 years or so now, but Fight Underground, uh, you know, I've said it since the jump, you know, I wanted to be a part of something that was going to make history, that was going to change the game. And, you know, I still believe that within Fight Underground. I think the only thing about that is um, this isn't like your typical uh, pro wrestling company. I mean, there's a lot of grit, there's a lot of tenacity, and no matter how much you win, everything can still be lost. You know, just like that, just by how the rankings go and how the voting and, and the council meetings and everything goes. So and so, you know, I think when, you know, looking at it now, I mean, I'm definitely privileged to be um, the winner for area one. You know, I, I look at people like uh, A.J. Alexander. You know, I look at I look at people like Moss Prevention and, you know, even going further to where, you know, I had to, you know, uh, win against Justin Idol. But, you know, no slouches by any means necessary on the Fight Underground roster. So the fact that I'm able to kind of, you know, get to where I am right now and now seeing however things turn out when it comes to beast man and i um that's the name of the game but like i said it's nothing but grit tenacity and i still say it because you know i don't i don't mind a little heat even it's from an old grumpy billionaire there was a fight underground before there was a raw underground you see what started last and you see what ended first that's mm. all i gotta say yeah, it, it, it is something when you have something that actually starts with the passion and not with the uh, well, let's let's try this on TV this week. Um, but uh, no, it, it, that entire um, first two areas are up on the social media for Fight Underground, of course, and, and the enti entire first area is actually up on the network, so you can see it all in one place. So um, you know, I mean that that's been it's been something different. You you've now been in two different venues where, where you're just wrestling in front of the uh, the rest of the roster, and 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 well, even some of the some of the people that uh. Uh, are trying to get on the show and uh i don't know got their moves tried out on a little bit i guess <laughs> so but um excellent so, uh, so there's so what what uh, we, we were joking of course about the us a network show earlier in case anybody needed that clarified uh but <laughs> <laughs> um otherwise you know I, I, and i know we, we we had you on talking on indie mayhem show early on in the pandemic and, and kind of adjusting to everything going on i know you picked up the eclipse tag team uh, championship. We've had Zeke Mercer on the show with the, uh, yeah, showing that off, hardware off. Uh, we were a little less afraid of having people in the studio a few months ago. Um, so, so how how have things been going for you? You know, uh, out there in Ohio. I, you know, I don't know if wrestling is really kind of picking up out there yet. I know it's not really here in the Pittsburgh area. Yeah, you know, right now in Ohio, I think everything is still very close. I mean, you know, we're still doing training, and I think that's one thing that's all been helping with the pandemic is with training. Uh, we all have our guys and our, our girls trained with face masks on, and even us, when we're coaching, we have to wear face masks. So I think just naturally just being able to press our lungs and our lung capacity to another level, that's at least a positive you can look at in the middle of wrestling in this pandemic. But mm -hmm. uh, other than that, Ohio's been slowly opening up, you know, very, um, very, very limited socially, you know, socially distant crowd there. Um, so just making sure we're doing that, but keeping everybody safe at the same time. And then, and then at the same time, even outside, of that you know coming back to certain areas where now i'm used to, i was used to double booking for certain nights um but now that's very very you know limited so you know still doing uh very few shows no crowd at eclipse uh, clearly with Fight Underground, is nothing but us in the locker room and our, our fight council is there. And, you know, some of those companies are still adjusting and waiting for weather to get warmer uh, so they can have outdoor shows. That's going to be a little bit more financially feasible for everybody. So mm -hmm. um, I think at the end of the day, the mindset is still the same. You know, we come in and we dominate wherever we're called to. We go in there, we try to get the gold, walk out, and, you know, increase the paycheck by the end of the night. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's, it's good to see that people are getting back into training. I know I've seen a lot of pictures of people getting back into the training here in the area as well. So that's good to see and people kind of working that out. Um, so, But I, I know not everybody can or, or feel comfortable or was at a different level. So, uh, you know, respect to that. Uh, so there's these pictures that, kept, that that just popped up, I noticed, in, there, in my feed from you in the last week. One of them's right there behind you. What? <laughs> what, <laughs> what is this? Hey, there's Shane. <laughs> Who's that? Yeah. So, so these are these are my crew. You know, my crew clearly. I don't. I don't know who. Uh, let me see if I got it. Look, a meteorologist. That guy right there. I don't know who that guy is. Uh, but Con right there. Shane right behind me. Moses on the other side. My man that just had his official debut. That's live now on Ring of Honor Wrestling YouTube page. O'Shea Edwards, the Kaiju. Mm -hmm. He is live right now. So, um, you know what we're doing right now is, you know. Um, everything that's happening right now, our mindset is how can we dominate by any means necessary? And um, one of the things, you know, we just had a, a full debut with all five of us together for the very first time 
on the indie circuit, uh, which has been kind of the talk of the, sorry, but has, has been kind of the talk of the area because, you know, not often do are you able to see gentlemen like us that's able to come in with a strong mindset all come together, even on the independent circuit. So, you know, we, we said, you know, even outside of Ring of, Ring of Honor, our game is to change pro wrestling in general, as a whole, worldwide, universal, international. And that starts with even coming into our independent wrestling organizations and, and everything like that. So, uh, you know, this was taken, I can't go too far into it, but this was actually in Texas. Uh, we, we, we had a project, we had a mission uh, to take care of. And let's just say whenever that is made public, that mission is going to be very loud and very clear. Mm -hmm. and, and that's all I can say on it right now. But uh, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was a little crazy. It was a little crazy. So, so big news, big news from your, your camp over there, you know, I know announced for coming up on that is the weekend of the 27th on ROH TV. I see yes. Shane, Shane's going to have a title match with Roosh. Um, and you can tell I've been watching ring of honor cause I know how to say Roosh now. You, you, know, you know what? You are actually doing pretty good. I can't tell you how many people say rush, rush, yeah, yeah. rush. You know, <laughs> I know that, we, were, we were on the indie. We were on the uh, uh, the indie company in Texas. Uh, fortunately, he you know he apologized. We're not one to hold uh, vendettas or anything. But he was calling Khan Kuan. Mm -hmm. uh, so the fact that you're able to know the names that's amazing. But yes. Coming up that week, we have officially, it is signed, sealed, and now it's time to deliver Shane T-Boy, the baddest champ you've ever seen, boy, against Ring of Honor's current world champion, Roosh. And I, I'm telling you, you know, I've you know, been talking to Shane about this for a while, and that was our mindset, even going back to final battle of 2020, uh, 2019. Uh, our mission was, hey, you know, we didn't hold on to the world television title like we wanted. He said, listen, we're not going to look behind us. We're going to look forward. My next mission is I already achieved this. How can I get to a world title now? And, you know, it took a little bit of hard work. It took some negotiation. But I think we're finally in a spot to where the world is hearing us. You know, there's a Facebook page called Choose Your Honor that people can go on there and say, this is what we think we want to see. And I'm here to tell you that the office does listen to that and does take a hands to what the fans are saying, what the crowd is saying very, very close to heart. So the fact that we were able to kind of sign our dot on that contract for Shane Taylor versus Roosh, I'm sorry, it's going to be nothing but money. I wouldn't be surprised if someone leaves out in a stretcher, honestly. Absolutely. I, I, I'm in that Facebook group, and it, I know when the question came up, um, you know, asking about who should get a title shot, like like seeing seeing the, the actual organic fan uh, uh, you know, reaction to the Shane's the guy, you know. Um, I, I say I really been impressed. I know we've been back and forth. You know, I, I've always, you know, what did I say? Uh, I, I, I never watched every episode, every week's episode of Ring of Honor, but whenever they're in town, I know it's going to be a good show, and I get back into it. It's, it was always an easy pickup. But, man, something happened in the last, like, several months of Ring of Honor TV between that pure tournament, and uh, we did we did watch Final Battle Live, um, a, a few of us here on the Mayhem show. It, it, it's like, you know, you know, Rick Morrow's always had a good, really good vibe for the live shows, but there's something they're doing uh, with those those um, closed sets in, down there in the bubble in Baltimore. That's just like, uh, you know, it, it, it's like it's like uh, Ring of Honor refound their voice a little bit. Yeah, I think that was that was one of the main things. I think before the pandemic fully went into factor, you know, there were talks about bringing back the pur the, uh, the pure title. But, you know, I think even outside of that, and like we've seen with, uh, you know, even, you know, WWE stepping up their game, AEW stepping up their game, you know, Ring of Honor, you know, we're no newbies to this. You know, we know what mm -hmm. it's like to handle ourselves in the midst of adversity and say, okay, the people that are laughing at us, it's not going to take us long to prove them wrong. And I think that was one of the main things, you know, clearly we went on a hiatus for nearly about a half a year with no uh, live shows or recorded empty arena shows whatsoever uh, until they were able to find a proper balance just to make sure everyone is safe. So uh, between the protocol that's in place with having people locked in the ROH bubble for days upon days upon days, uh, I think even outside of that, when it comes to production, when it comes to management, when it comes to all the, all the guys and the girls in their locker room, I think right now was the time that said, okay, this is our time to rewrite our wrongs. This is our time to show why we are considered the best wrestling on the planet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I feel like right now, no shots are being held. It's about how can we deliver this day in and day out on a consistent basis. And I think that's what people are seeing right now. Absolutely. It's really interesting to see that development and, and seeing these pure matches. Um, and just see, seeing kind of a refocus on character, it seems, too. Um, like, the profiles have just been, like, the, these these match profiles, like, they'll drop in a guy that I really don't know. And, uh, and, and they, they've just been absolutely fantastic. 
Um, I'm really impressed. We mentioned this on, on, on the side before the show because I, I know, Mike, you caught this too. I saw that Cheeseburger has been renamed. <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 cheeseburger is one of those guys you always look forward to on you know one of the indie shows or the ring of honor shows but uh but getting that backstory of why he was cheeseburger and now he's he's kind of he's going into the pure tournament i know that match helped in the weekend I, I didn't have an opportunity to catch it unfortunately um but i, I plan to um but uh but like that like that's been some some cool things about that or or joe keys that we we know from um, I've seen him up in up in Revenge, and of course another promotion here in, in Pittsburgh. Um, to see him come in and just pretty much black trunks, no, you know, I, I, you know, I forgot what his entire you know vibe was when he was here before, but just being like pure wrestler Joe Keys and just gone Jonathan Gresham last week has been like I I love these stripped down and rebuilds that are happening over there right now. Yeah, I think it's one of the things where we're like, how can we be different? And, you know, it's not necessarily to the fact of how can we rewrite something, but when you look at things like the pure title, I mean, you look at just the legacy behind that belt and some guys that are, you know, at what people are considering the Mecca right now, it all stems from, and I think that's what a lot of people don't understand. When you look at pro wrestling as a whole, everything has a route back to Ring of Honor. And, you know, some people know that and some people find it out years later. But when you really do your homework, everything has a route back with all your major companies outside of Ring of Honor. Somehow it all has a route back to Ring of Honor. So I think, you know, just like you said, Sorg, was that time for us to find our voice to the best of our ability, but also saying, OK, this is what we have. We're confident in what we have. And let us push it out there even further. Let the viewers know what we have and why they need to tune in. So uh, it, with, with my boy Cheeseburger, Cheeseburger was actually one of my opponents with my uh, debut. I had a triple threat against him and, and my good friend of mine, Derek Neal. But, you know, seeing him now, the world famous CB. And, you know, talking about how he got his name. But now, you know, while there have been some pros with that, there have also been some things that have naturally held him back. So even now, you know, you look at Cheeseburger that's been in the game for 10 plus years now, including mainly at Ring of Honor, and you're even seeing him refurbish himself, refine himself. And then, you know, showing things that, you know, even guys that share a locker room with him didn't even know he had in him. So I think it's very refreshing for a lot of people, honestly. Yeah, a lot of fun stuff over there. And I think that's that's been that's been the greatest thing coming out of this is opportunity to rebuild uh, for a lot of people that needed that, right? So um, whether it be guys on the Indies or, or in Ring of Honor or whoever the case may be. So awesome. So um, 